pausing. Who would like to start um, first? Well, hi, hi, Ben. This is Sheila. Hi, Sheila. Go ahead, Sheila. Share with, uh, share with us what you have noticed in this recording. Right. I think in the first record, in the first, the first coach was trying really to achieve a level of awareness. However, because of the, the way the questions were asked, it yeah. led really on coming up with solutions already. Mm -hmm. uh, what steps the person has taken? Uh, what has she, what, what, what has she tried? With coach two, mm -hmm. what made it different is the fact that it's really more of a reflection mm. and at the moment they're simply saying, oh yes, it's enough that I have a sense of purpose. That's it. Mm -mm -mm -mm. And, and, and uh, yeah, that, that's the main distinction. Yeah. It just kind of because I think I agree with the exchanges in the group chat. I wasn't able to catch connecting accountability with encouragement. Mm -hmm. uh, I would have immediately, I, I would have picked up, if, if I were the coach, I would have picked up on the word encouragement. I don't know if, how it would lead to uh, self-realization, but somehow I would probably ask, what does encouragement, how does it look like to you when you're encouraged or you're inspired? Yeah. Yeah, I, I think the first coach. I think the first coach actually got it. Well, well, the first attempt was to focus on feasibility, and then I think he got the first coach in that. You know, somehow got the hint. Oops, that gets into the content, and then he tries to sort of like bounce back and say, "Okay, so let's talk about encouragement, being encouraged." Mm -hmm. I I think it, it's just more of like the. The questions was not precise enough to direct uh, forcefully the client's attention to that uh, object. It's sort of like, right. it's sort of like, kind of like you know, if you listen back to the recording again, which I will encourage you guys uh, to listen back to that, that, that piece, you know, after the 15 minutes times out, the first coach actually picked on the word encourage. Take a look at the whole chain of questions. You know, it was quite of stacking onto one another. You know, there was one point the coach was kind of like rephrase again. Oh, no, actually, I'm just asking what else. You know, what does it mean? And how does it look like? So it ends up kind of like trying to dress up the question too much. And it was like, kind of like, it losses the client at that moment. You know what I mean? So the clients also mm -hmm. get distracted. And that's why I think, you know, we kind of like the beautiful moment was sort of like lost. You know? Yeah. And then, then you went back again to, okay, so let's talk about uh, where are you right now in terms of starting the projects? You know? Mm -hmm. And then get the clients back onto the situation again of where she is with the problem situation. Uh -huh. Thank you for that uh, observation. And how about Tanya? What are you noticing here that is worthy of learning? Yes, uh, I think the coach did, did well on the uh, how she explored the current situation and mm -hmm. to find the point B, which is an uh, encouragement. And uh -huh. uh, the, the client speaks so clear and she repeats the word encourage uh, several times. Yeah. And, uh, uh, to make the conversation better, I think the coach uh, can spend more time on awareness and clarity. Uh, mm -hmm. I, the coach did ask uh, many good questions like, uh, what what the result you like to take away uh, and this is of the point B and mm -hmm. like, how uh, are you right now in terms of encouragement and mm -hmm. how would you know that you have been encouraged and what made this project impact you? I think of this uh, good question. By the way, the client, uh, the, uh, the client answer is focused on her situation. Mm. Uh, yes, and uh, maybe the coach can can ask more to deepen her learning, like to to do more on clarity. Like for example, uh, when you say and to be encouraged, uh, what it look like to you? Or when you say you, you will feel it when you be encouraged, tell me more about this, how, how is it like? Mm. And to elaborate more on the accountability, I think out of this work is like a window that uh, the coach can, can explore more. Yes. Thank you, yes. Tanya. And I, my, what I felt is that I think the coach one did a fairly good job in awareness conversation. It's just that I felt that what needed attention here is 
that the the coach might want to be a little bit more directive in helping the clients to identify what is she not seeing. Now, if you listen to the recording again, and and this time round, if you're going to put aside logic, it really feels that the client is not 100% buy-in. While in the mind, there was 100% buy-in, but it wasn't really 100% buy-in in the heart level. And since the conviction was somehow, somehow something is missing, you know what I mean? That the clients knew it, but then something is missing there, which was like, hmm, it was kind of like, yeah, that was not, I wouldn't even use the word doubt. I, no, I, I can't even put a word to describe it, but if you were to just not to think about, not to just think about it, but just to feel it, you can feel that, yay, there's something that's going on with the client, you know, that she's needing. And then when the piece of uh, accountability comes in, it's kind of, uh, kind of like, uh, like, you know, if I'm going to use a metaphor, you know, like the, the wolf, you know, the wolf fairy, you know, the tail suddenly come out you know, like, to reveal some telltale sign. You know what I mean? So I, I think that's where we could sort of like catch that tail and say, hey, what that tail is, without making the clients feel that there is a leakage or there is a problem or something is wrong with the clients. And I think that is where, you know, we have to dance between helping clients to focus on what is it that they can create against what is the leakage, what is the hole that we need to patch it up. Well, the first coach doesn't seem to make it that obvious, but you can see the orientation is towards what is missing that I can help my clients to patch it up. Whereas the second coach, hold on to the space of what is it that is in your heart of heart that you can create? And if this is what you want to create, what is happening here? What is it that is in the way right now? So there wasn't really a flow of getting the clients to kind of like fix the issue but more in understanding what is happening right now with all the current reality. I think the beauty of it is to lock into the client's uh, content, saying that, oh, you got an idea, there is a whole lot of aspiration, and there's a whole lot of uh, feasibility study, a whole lot of uh, design concept there. So this is what you have. This is what, where you are. And so what's happening here? Yeah, I mean, so I think that's where the dynamics is very different. And that's where we can appreciate the power of positive psychology here. Because in, in, in the science of psychology, in the science of positive psychology, hopes always give that um, hope is a very powerful element that helps people to therefore take ownership without having that blame and the, the guilt. It's more about aspiration, purpose, and vision. Okay, so remember Sue class? You know what I mean? She talks about the five different uh, levels. Uh, environment. Second one is capacity. So here the coach, uh, the client has articulated a lot in environment and capacity. Hmm, the missing part is the values. The identity yes. and also the last one the vision what is it that the clients is seeing and right now the clients is not seeing the future the clients is seeing at what is missing now what is lacking what if all these things is not here so the, the vision the way they are looking is more and looking from a point of a lack what if all this is not around what if this are so it is something that the clients doesn't like. It's not about what the clients like. See what I mean? Great. Thank you for that observation. So we have two. Uh, Martin, if we could, we hold the space here first. Let me get the input from uh, Sophie and Nog to see what can you share. I mean, what are some things that they spotted that 
you know, could deepen our students' learning uh, today. So who would like to start first? <laughs> I, I can start. Go ahead, now. Okay. So I really appreciated the, the effort of the coach, Coach Wong, to uh, try to help the client to deepen um, her awareness. And, uh, okay, I agree with all the comments that were already made about coaching around the situation. And at one point of the conversation, just before Coach Two stepped in, actually there was a shift in the level of energy of yeah. the client. And okay, okay, got it. And, Go and I was very, I was very grateful for Coach One to pick it up mm -hmm. because he noticed it. But then, I think it would have been a good opportunity for the coach, for Coach One, to uh -huh. explore more about that vision yeah but hi Nog we are losing you okay so well Nog is uh, picking up from the technical challenge maybe Sophie you would like to fill up the gap first for the time being okay sure um, you can hear me Ben loud and clear <laughs> right thank you um, what I'm appreciating about Coach One, I think he's able to hold the space for the client to tell her story in yes. a very non-judgmental way. Precisely. And Agree. from there, the intimacy and trust was created between Agree. the client and the coach, which was beautifully done. Agree. There were a few questions that were quite powerful, I thought. Uh, for example, um, the coach asked, you know, what else have you explored? And the client actually said, you know, good question. And yeah. that's what that's the coach asked for, <laughs> the indication that he's asking, the, the, doing the powerful asking. Yeah. yeah. And then the other one that was quite good is, what would you, make this, what would you like this conversation? Uh, um, okay, what would make this conversation meaningful to you? <laughs> that is very powerful. Um, areas that I would do slightly differently is... Um, I'm just curious, at a very early part, the coach one asked what, actually he wanted to ask what would this be important to you, but somehow he changed the what to why. Yeah. And so the client goes on to describe the situation about the, the students' needs and all that, instead of uh, looking within himself and see what is there, what is inside me that having this yearning to want Precisely. to do this. Yeah, and so I, I the, really agree with you. And I would like to change that question a little bit. I said, what, what does this project mean to you personally? Mm. That might be much more sharper than uh, even with the word, why would this be important to you? The way the question was structured tends to target the logic. Mm. It doesn't give the visioning uh, or the values. That it doesn't really land well in connecting to the vision. So Consider these two questions now. Huh? Why, or even we choose it to what? What makes this important to you? Mm. And then we change that to what does this project mean to you personally? So the, the, the aspect of exploring significant will have a greater impact. Well, certainly mm. we can guarantee that the clients will, you know, bite it. <laughs> you know what I mean? But, yeah. but at least, you know, we know where to target in a way mm. that eliminates the odd. Mm. Yeah. Actually, that comes to the second part of what I uh, observe and notice is that um, the question of you know, what would make this or why would this be important to you is a bit too early. Yeah. The, the balloon hasn't been blown up yet. Yeah. So, uh, you know, the, the, I think they still have some space for awareness to be surfaced. Yes. Yeah. More powerful when it comes later data about the importance and meaningfulness and one, yeah and one area i'd like to share from my own experience in this journey at a very beginning stage is that stay true to the acc framework it is very powerful mm. and it is powerful because it is the framework gives you a few very simple questions but simple doesn't mean it's simplistic mm. it is 
but yet powerful and allow the clients to go within and inside themselves. And that's what, yeah. what you keep teaching us about, you know, inside out coaching. Yeah. To get the learning out of the client. Yeah, you know, precisely. What, what I'm appreciating. Yeah, well, there's a lot to acknowledge in the first coach because the faithfulness mm. is taken to the framework. I think the, all the comments that we mentioned are just taking the skill to the next level of mastery. So remember, this is the motto of uh, CMA. Good is always the enemy of best. While we do acknowledge that there are a lot of good stuff, but we yes. are not interested in good stuff. We are interested about you. <laughs> <laughs> mastering the craft so you paid for ACC but we don't want to give you ACC we want to give you PCC so even if you can demonstrate PCC we want you to be able to demonstrate at MCC yeah I mean that is how we're going to serve one another you know the continuous learning the space in interaction of you sharing and you know your insight and perspective and getting that fine touch the artfulness of really getting every piece, you know, as beautiful as we can because serving the clients is what really matters and precision, directiveness towards where we can, uh, where our mind needs to be focused on is going to be a way, you know, ongoing journey, even changing the word, you know, modifying that, that the whole exploring of significance from why makes this important to you, which we have taught you in class. You know, when we come to the practical coaching session, you learn the very same question can be modified to change to what does this project mean to you personally to get a much more personal statement, you know, to get significance on the topic. See what I mean? So these are fine art that we can learn. Thank you. Thank you, Sophie. So we have two guests here left. That is Martin and Sue. Uh, would you like to share something before we end off the class? Well, we have a private session with the coach, so there is still a space there to talk about it. But if, uh, before you move on, I just want to check in. Anything that you'd like to talk uh, and contribute, Sue and Martin, to our friends here? Hello. Um, you. Maybe I can answer Hello. and question. Go ahead, okay, Martin. Right. Then after this, you will take over from you. Yeah, I think there is a good question on the, on the chat here. So maybe answering it will, will serve the whole class. The question is, should we or could we invest time into understanding about the project itself? And... I think it's very important and this this recording will be uh, very interesting to listen to and especially coach two doesn't know anything about the project either <laughs> and the, the topic of this conversation is not what's inside this project and as soon as we as coaches uh, try to do something for us because we do not understand we are asking to deepen our knowledge or understanding, it's about us and it's mm. not about the client anymore. So be careful when we, yes, we are curious because that's one of the, of the qualities we need as coaches, but, but I think we should be careful to be curious in a way that serves the client. If it serves ourselves, maybe, maybe it's not the, the right thing. Good. The other thing I want to mention is a is very interesting recording because it starts <coughs> with a simple statement. I want to know whether or not to start an internet project, whatever project, mm -hmm. whether or not. So the first question is very simple, straightforward, like at the end we have a yes or no answer. And the coach won within only four questions. It's very, very, very short time. With it, only four questions brings the client to say, oh, no, 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 this project is worthwhile. This project has value. And this was done extremely quickly. The, the, the questions were very open. And, and so um, I, I appreciate the, this, this very quick start um, very much. And, and even in the rest, maybe it's not as as quick and straightforward as coach two, and we're happy that the master coach has a higher level than we have. <laughs> so, <laughs> but, but actually, uh, within the rest of the conversation, mm -hmm. coach one brought up, I need encouragement yeah. and I need accountability. 
So, so it was very close to something, and the only thing missing is being able to very quickly process all this information and extract those two bullet points. Yeah. Which just takes a lot of practice, but everything was there. Everything yeah. was on the table. The questions led to put all the important things on the yeah. table. So okay. kudos to our coach one. Thank you, Martin, for that strong acknowledgement. And I say this is a very good recording. It really supersedes, you know, in many ways, a tactical coaching conversation. The, the faithfulness and sticking through the framework, as what Sophie mentioned, just keeping sticking through to the framework itself and keeping it simple has already demonstrated his power to bring that inside out perspective away, you know, from a tactical situation. It's just a matter of practice of getting used to how we can just skin the snake alive, you know what I mean? Okay, good. How about you? Anything else you'd like to comment? Uh, sure, or I hope you are all right. There's a lot of us today. <laughs> <laughs> holding up cool. It's a good okay, investment great. of money, actually. You know? <laughs> Um, so, yeah, I thought also that um, I thought Coach Wan did a great job mm -hmm. at the start of the conversation, allowing the story to come out. Yeah. And I agree with mm -hmm. Sophie and, and Nicole that um, there was a lot of patience to allow the story to come yeah. out. And um, someone asked in the chat room, like Martin was pointing out, do you want to go straight in first? But actually, when the client actually sounds confused and is in a conflict of decisions, it's actually good yeah. to help the client to get the emotions and the context out. So yeah. that was actually very well done by Coach Juan. Um, the other thing that might be helpful to those listening in is the verbal cues. Mm -hmm. um, so the coach, um, I know you followed the framing, but let's also listen to the verbal cues yeah. of the client. The client used a lot of words where she said, I'm thinking. Yeah. And I'm thinking whether or not it's this. I'm not sure. You know, I think... Yeah, so she's been actually at the thinking level. Yeah. So she's logically processing the situation. But then when she actually got to where she's stuck, it's about feeling. Yes. So it's actually what's deep in the heart. So it's good to pay attention to the, the verbal cues of the client. Um, the other thing that's helpful is also um, the client actually came up with a metaphor. Mm -hmm. When she was describing the project, she said she was in a catch-22. So that straight away tells you that this person, I mean, we can ask what it means to her to be in the catch-22, to really fully be aware of that internal conflict that's going on within mm -hmm. her. So that's one point where you can turn the conversation around as well, which mm -hmm. is quite early on. So yeah. you did a great job at the, the first portion. Mm -hmm. And then you also got to the accountability and the encouragement. So my question to you, Kieran, is, when you actually got to where you actually want to get to, you said you didn't want to log on to just the head. You now got on to the heart. Mm. My question to you is, when you got to the heart, what stopped you from going further? Mm. How comfortable or how often are you having a conversation with someone where you go deep beyond the logical level, even as a person? So this might be something to think about that would really help you to break out of I'm not going to be fearful of talking to this person about what's so deep inside of her yeah and that might change the way you take the conversation forward yeah yeah you, you for the yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we'll continue the discussion in the private session okay great so now for everybody well this being the second practical coaching session let me just give a couple of minutes for you guys to check out what are some of your learning we want to make sure that you are in the right space to practice what you have gained in the four days so anyone else would like to have a check out on what's your learning so far about using these ACC conversations. Okay. Let's take a couple of more seconds for you guys to thought it through. Anything that you'd like to clarify? If not, I will just quickly go through. Kara, anything that's in your mind at this moment? Kara has no response. How about Nico? Anything on your mind? Regarding the ACC conversation, good to go. How about Esther? Anything on your mind regarding the conversation? No, I think it's quite clear the framework is clear. 
do it with our time. How about homing? Anything else on your mind? Okay, this is a very quick one. Um, it's about the risk taking that uh, Sue just mentioned. Okay. That is always going to be a big challenge for myself because I've done a couple of practice with uh, you know some of the classmates, and uh, mm -hmm. I think one of the feedback is this part about staying detached, but then at the same time you are also invested in partnering, and, and investment in partnering requires certain emotions from you. So I, mm -hmm. you know. I do have this uh, issue, right? And I'm aware it's not of it. an issue for me. It's not an issue. It is a mastery. Okay. okay. Don't see that as an issue. That was actually one of the trick, one of the benchmark for MCC coaching that the conversation need to get into that space of AG. You know, where you get so discomfort. But that's where really the change happens. <laughs> it's not yeah. an issue. It's not an issue. It's a mastery. It is an art to be appreciated of how we can be dancing in that moment where we are holding on, but yet, you know, inviting. I, I think mm. that's the whole framework of awareness, clarity, and choice conversation. It's yeah. both hard and soft. You know, it's soft in the beginning so that it can be hard later on. You know, the awareness is a very gentle invitation while clarity is a forceful demanding, you know, asking the client, so what is it? Mm -hmm. What is it that you're giving away? Yeah. Are you I mean, that, afraid of? <laughs> the dancing is not just with the client. The dancing is in my own head as well. Precisely. <laughs> Welcome, oh, welcome <laughs> to the world of mastery. <laughs> the point is not an issue, guys. It's okay, thanks art. for the encouragement. <laughs> <laughs> just do it. My, my invitation okay. is just do it in this 10 practical coaching session and read it. There is no reason, okay? I mean, these are all cosmetic that you can practice and I'm so sorry. Inject wrongly. <laughs> oh, sorry, <Okay>. wrongly. <laughs> this is the space of learning. Just take the risk and do it because you can't do it out there with a real paying client. <laughs> okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All volunteered <laughs> people for you to <laughs> exercise. Okay, Dasha. Dasha, anything uh, on your mind? Yeah, on me. I'm good to go. Good to go. Okay, L, anything on your mind? No, I'm Great. fine, thanks. Asman? Good to go. Wilson, good. Wilson, you're on mute. You can come back to you. Hi, Clement. Oh, hi, hi. I just want to okay, say... Wilson, go ahead. I just want to say this is the first time I attended this session and it's a very powerful learning experience for me. Okay. I'm particularly excited and so uh, delighted to hear all the different contributions I made by all the participants here. And also would like to congratulate Jason I think he did a well, good job, and uh, for me, this is a really powerful learning experience. Thank, Thank you for you. To see me. Good. How about Clement? Um, I just think that it's uh, really good to see how the questions connect the dots and yeah. whether you'll lose that halfway. Precisely. It's really connecting the dots. Yeah. Hopefully not to lose it. Yes, not to lose a precious moment. You beautiful. How about Deepa? What's on your mind to check out? Hello, Deepa. Uh, I think um, I was as I Just mentioned I'm impressed with the way that the coach can you hear me? Loud and clear. Can you hear me? Loud and clear. Okay, great. So I was impressed certainly with, with, the, with the coach, um, how he managed to reach, get the client to reach the encouragement bit. And I think after that, as uh, trying to put myself in the coach's shoes, just trying to frame the questions is, is the big learning for me here. Yes, uh, I like the way you say it's a big really learning. Amazing. Thank you. <laughs> Let every particular coaching session be a learning on how we can frame the question better, how to be more direct in, in getting the client's attention to awareness. Okay, make this a journey of learning, okay, not a journey of challenge. <laughs> how about Morgan? Once you check out, I think for many of us who are new to this, we are very mindful of the framework mm -hmm. and we keep thinking about where we are in this whole project. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, you know, have we done this? Did we do that? And in our head, we're like checking what we're talking. <laughs> and then we get distracted about also the, 
you know what the the client is saying. Mm -hmm. Um, I think I I totally agree with what you uh, said that you know even even prior to all this uh, I mean the training that we had and all that when we had conversations that if you're very uh, invested in the topic and the person that we are talking to uh, the ability to listen and ask the right question comes naturally. Yeah. So I we need to uh, position or. or find a way for us to get into the groove to, to really be invested in what the client is saying yeah. rather than thinking about the framework are we in the A are we in the C are we in the yes. yeah yes. So, so I think we're still guilty or at least I'm still guilty of uh, very much thinking about have I done this have I done that uh, mm -hmm. did I already cross this line yet or not yet I think I need to go back to um, you know, having that framework but yet mm -hmm. not thinking about the framework well, and that. in the client's uh, uh, interest and, and what exactly are they trying to get to and, and help them see that. Precisely. And that's my encouragement to all of you. Listen to the recording second time. That is how you can get the framework stuck into your brain, into your mind without consciously thinking about that. So that is a kind of like a very... Um, a routine that we have discovered that helps to create a framework you know, as natural as, uh, as it can be, okay? So the hard work is still required, okay? How about Skype? Anything, anything in your mind that you'd like to check out? Great. How about Eva? Any check out? Uh, nope. Good Thank to go. You. Thank How you. about you? Um, I'm worried about wanting to ask about not being <laughs> offensive. It's like... Can I, will I offend the client? But I think that's where the practice should come in. Yes. Okay, stick with the big heart. As long as you're there to serve the clients, this is a space to make the mistake. Take out all that you can learn and then move on. <laughs> Thank you. Is that about Joe? Is that, uh, what's your checkout? Can you hear me? Loud and clear, Joe. Okay. Um, I'm sorry. I was in and out because of the connection, so uh -huh. I didn't really hear very much of the conversation. So I won't. Can I not sure. comment today? No problem. Yeah. So sorry. Yeah. Okay. So I sense that everybody is in a good space of learning. So let me recap some of the key things for uh uh for follow up actions. Uh, remember.